Brian Weed, I have Pasta Padre here with TJ Lowerman of That Sports Gamer to discuss the EA Access program that was just announced. EA Access is a subscription service for $30 a year or $5 a month that provides the ability to play a library of some older titles from the company, play games up to five days before they release, and receive 10% off digital purchases. For now, it's exclusive to Xbox One. It's in beta for select users and will roll out to everyone within the next few weeks. The concept is very similar to the EA Sports season ticket for anyone who's familiar with that, which was $25 a year for the subscription and gave three days early access to games, 20% off downloadable content, and some bonuses mostly related to Ultimate Team. So EA Access is a little more money, but it would seem to provide a lot more content. On the surface, it's a good value. It's not limited to sports games, though it's still dominated by them. It lets you play some older games, which would still cost a lot more to buy outright. Provides a longer pre-release play period, unless there is a catch. They haven't explained fully yet. Uh, it does have a smaller discount, but includes the actual digital full games and not just downloadable content. Yet it's all restricted to the Xbox One, which eliminates a larger base of consumers for the games on the PS4. The bigger catch that we know of at this point uh, might be the restriction on how long those pre-release games can be played. Uh, apparently it can be for as few as two hours, uh, but they're not setting anything in concrete at this point. Uh, the EA Access Twitter account has stated you'll never have less than two hours, but each trial is different and will often be longer. So if it's limited to a handful of hours for sports games in particular, that's going to damage the appeal. It would make pre-release period little more than demos, and the vault would become the main draw. So response right now to EA Access seems to be mostly positive, which is fairly rare for anything EA related. <laughs> it goes to show there's some sort of market for a service such as this. So now, TJ... I'd like you to chime in your first reaction to the EA Access program. And then, you know, you're, you're known for the ultimate team side of things. So give me your thoughts on how that relates here uh, for your plans going forward. Sure, Brian, and thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, uh, when you're I welcome. first uh, saw the EA Access program, I was pretty excited. And I thought, oh, this is a good thing. It's very similar to Season Ticket, and it's going to get a lot of people playing some of their back catalog. And then I started thinking... This is only Xbox One. There's not a ton of EA back catalog. And I actually went and looked it up. Uh, there's only... Well, this says 12,000 games, but that's definitely not right. That's... Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's only like 10 games in their current back catalog. And half of those games are sports games. So you're not really going to get a lot of old stuff. This would be a really cool thing if it was like three years down the road and there was a ton of games that you could get that you could possibly get in this vault. Uh, and as it pertains specifically to sports games, because that's what your readers and listeners are all about, uh, this is really paling in comparison to the old season ticket pr program, uh, where you used to be able to get 20% off of all DLC, including your ultimate team packs, all that stuff. Uh, courses in Tiger Woods was always the big thing. Uh, and also, there was tons of ultimate team. Uh, I think you would get 20 packs per game or 30 packs, depending on which game uh you were getting it for well you would get yeah. it for all the games but and now those are pre-order bonuses for the most part right and the real bad part is as of right now the ultimate editions of those where you would get the 20 or 30 ultimate team packs that's not even available digitally so if you do this deal you're not going to be getting your 10 percent off of that purchase yeah i i thought that's interesting because it's almost as though if that's not going to be the case if you can't get the ultimate edition digitally, then it's almost like they're pushing the Ultimate Team players away from from right. being able to get this 10% discount, right? And uh, and like you said, it was 20% in the past, uh, so it, there's definitely an effect there, too. Almost like they're trying to eliminate more of the hardcore uh, players of Ultimate Team and bring in the casual crowd to the mode instead. Yeah, and if you're going to be playing Ultimate Team and spending money, obviously 10% off is a good deal because God knows people spend way too much money on Ultimate Team. So you're, they will probably get the return on investment of the $30 per year in Ultimate Team because I think you have to spend, what, $300 to make that 30 bucks make sense. Mm. So I'm sure there are a lot of people that that will work for, but it was nicer the old way. Yeah, 
Yeah, I also think this could be a sign that they're not going to branch off Ultimate Team into their own games, which is something I figured would happen sooner or later, uh, because they could look at bringing in the subscription plan, pulling people in as opposed to having the barrier of $60 or the free-to-play model, which kind of has a bad stigma around it. For an, an Ultimate Team player like yourself, what would you prefer uh, your way to access that mode? Would it be with a subscription service kind of like they're setting up here for the future? It's not where that would be now, uh, but in the future they could evolve it to that point. Uh, is it with buying the game first, just like it is now with the, with the standard games or a free-to-play model? What would you prefer out of those? Uh, it's funny because like you, I always thought they would sp- spin off the Ultimate Team stuff, but then I realized that what happens with a game like NHL, where they're making a ton of money out of the NHL Ultimate Team, and then they see very little sales on the regular game? Would they just kill the regular game and continue on with Ultimate Team? So that puts you in like a really weird headspace about that. But Yeah. And that's uh, FIFA World, which EA released on PC, is essentially Ultimate Team mode on its own. Uh, so, so they definitely had that idea. Now, whether they think bringing in a subscription model above that is is more financially viable for them is kind of interesting to see now. Yeah, and I always thought they would take maybe the logical next step in Ultimate Team and in just saying, here, for 200, for $200, you get all of the EA Sports titles and you're good to go and you don't have to worry about it. Because yeah. that, that makes a pretty good deal because you're paying for what uh, a little more than three games and they put out, what, five or six games? Mm-hmm. So it would be a good deal, but that doesn't well, yeah. seem like the way they're going with this. I think I think a subscription service uh, could become that in the future, and I, I think it makes sense for sports games more so maybe than others, uh, and that's why the season ticket made sense when they rolled that out. They never really promoted it though, and it just kind of died off. So, uh, but if you look at the the time frames for when these sports games release. Within a six-week period, you have Madden, NHL, FIFA, NBA Live, and you can throw in NBA 2K when we're talking sports in general, plus Pro Evolution Soccer and others uh, that are kind of on the fringe of sports. Uh, people can't shell out 240 bucks in a six-week span on games. So what they do is they end up selecting one or two of them. Now, with a subscription service, EA could, let's say, let's throw out a number, say 100 bucks a year, uh, whatever number that is for them above the average consumer over the course of a year because most people are going to buy one or two games uh, from them in a year. Very few are going to buy more than that, and some are going to buy zero. So if they can get some of those zero people in uh, and you get them in a subscription uh, and you keep them around, uh, they could end up making more money that way and, and introducing people to these other games. Plus, like we said, pulling them into Ultimate Team, which they may not have done so otherwise. Yeah, if they did, say, 10 bucks a month for all the sports games, that would be a really good deal because I would probably not buy NBA 2K because I would be getting NBA Live essentially for free. And you'd have the chance to play it early to see if it was worth it. Right. Um, well, and yeah, that's one of the things I was thinking. If I had a five-day trial period with UFC, there's a good chance I would not have bought that game mm-hmm. because it didn't come until a couple of weeks later when I was like, oh, now I'm starting to get this game. But after the demo and... If I would have played like a five-day trial of the full thing, I probably would have been frustrated to the point where I just would not have purchased it at all. Well, I think that that's an interesting thing to consider too. Is that as far as EA goes, their their games better be quality, or else the the buzz on them is going to be negative, and that can spread. If you have these games available five days early, and and people think it's not very good, then you've got the crowd on the PS4, which is actually where more consumers are right now, who are going to hear about that, and they could pass on the game. So. The, Maybe that we always thought with season ticket it would kind of add pressure in that sense to them too. I'm not sure if that resulted in better games, but they're really exposing themselves to that either for the positive benefits or the negative. And then they'll say, well, there's a day one patch coming, and then there'll be <laughs> another excuse that in two months there's going to be another patch that's going to fix everything that was broken the last yeah. two times. So, yeah, just continue your, your subscription and eventually you'll reap those benefits, TJ. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, despite. EA betting on the Xbox One being the bigger console when they made that partnership with Microsoft uh, for exclusive content and, and marketing agreements. Um, you know, this I don't think this is going to reverse any sort of trend. There's already too many people entrenched on the PS4. And like myself, who owns both consoles but buys the third-party games on the PS4, it, it makes me want to go over to the Xbox One to play the games early 
and maybe get the free games that I wouldn't bought otherwise, but I'm not going to change that I'm buying on the PS4. That's where most of the people I play games with are already. Um, but this does make for an interesting selling point for Microsoft, for anyone who's on the fence. In the meantime, you know, PS4 gamers, I think they have a right to be a little perturbed by this uh, exclusive arrangement. Now, I think there's a very good chance, uh, if not a likelihood, that EA Access is timed exclusive of some sort. Six months, a year. It's hard for me to believe EA would pass up money selling uh, selling the service on on their higher selling console. Plus, uh, you know, the idea behind it is to get people kind of accustomed to paying digitally uh, for games and for downloadable content. Um, that's what the publishers want because these digital games can't be sold used and and. At the same time, they're going to get people to try games they may not have otherwise. They may end up buying them because of that. They're hooking people into this uh, and giving them the sense that, hey, you're saving six bucks on this game, less if you're factoring in the cost of subscription, but uh, you don't have the ability to sell it later. So you're, those people who would normally get rid of their used games and get 15, 20, 30 bucks back when they feel like they're done with them, they're not actually saving money, but right. EA is going to project that as uh, kind of a benefit here. Yeah, and especially if you're not an Ultimate Team gamer, literally all you're saving is the $6 if you buy it digitally. Yeah. You're not going to save anything on DLC if you're not going to be playing Ultimate Team buying that stuff. Yeah, so what do you think is the future of EA Access? You think, it, you think it'll come to the PS4 too, I would imagine. Um, what games would make the Vault compelling, or do they have the library of games for that? And, and how can they better suit it for sports gamers, uh, which I think it appeals to more now than others and everyone else at this point? Yeah, I think the main thing that would help a lot is just to get those Ultimate Editions digitally. Right now, we still haven't seen anything saying that they will be up on the store. Uh, like right now, I am gonna buy the game. Di uh, I'm gonna buy Madden digitally, and I'm gonna ask Rich to buy the Ultimate Edition, and I'm just gonna hope that it's just a little code that you have to input, mm. and then buy it off him. <laughs> because yeah. that's that's the most simple way that I can figure out to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, I think this will end up coming to the PS4 probably early next year if not i mean they could announce it in a month they've said we have no further announcements as of now which mm -hmm. it could be the day before madden releases they say hey we also have this yeah <laughs> uh but yeah i think i don't want to sound like it's a bad deal because it's a pretty good deal if you like all the stuff that they make but me personally i only play their sports games i don't really like their shooters and stuff so that's not great for me but uh, it's a good deal, and it's only going to get better as they have more games in their catalog. And I would like a bigger discount. I mean, 6 bucks is nice, but mm -hmm. if they could knock it down a little more, that'd be better. Uh, but yeah, once they start releasing new titles like the next battle, the Star Wars Battlefront game and all the Dragon Age games and stuff that they're going to be putting out, it'll, it's only going to get better. So the question is, do they keep it at $5 a month when it gets better, or are they going to up the price as the vault gets bigger and bigger? So we just have to see what goes on with that. Yeah, I, I would expect the, the price to go up at some point. But look, we saw the season ticket essentially fail. Mm -hmm. Now that was, I thought it was because they never really promoted it at all. Right. They had the website and, and that kind of announced it. I don't even remember if it got a full press release or not, but they never followed up. They never advertised it after that. And then they were kind of, uh, they would note that, you know, not that many people signed up for season tickets. So we thought it kind of disappeared when they discontinued it, uh, but it, it it obviously evolved into what we have with EA Access, and that was almost like a testing uh, ground for for this. Uh, you know, what do you think about season ticket didn't resonate with people, um, and do you think they learned from any of that with what they've done here with EA Access? I think it was a really really good deal. They just didn't promote it enough. Like I knew people that even when they bought the next gen consoles, they still went back purchased the season ticket for their old console they would get the packs open them and transfer the cards over to the other consoles i mean mm -hmm. it was it was great value uh i mean then they had problems where they didn't release a tiger woods game or they're not releasing a tiger woods game till later next year uh they're not gonna there's have no games. tiger woods or, it's yeah, like whatever yeah tiger it's woods a golf gone. game it's with gone. battleships uh i think you can still sign up for uh yeah, I just looked at the website today, and they still promote it like, hey, sign up. It says it's a PS3 360 exclusive, but if you look at the details, it it says, you know, schedule release, and it's got Madden 25 mm -hmm. and and uh, and all the old games in there. So I don't even know if it would work if you tried to. Yeah. 
Um, you probably still get the, the uh, Ultimate Team packs and stuff. But. My my recommendation is don't sign up for the season ticket. <laughs> no, why not? Uh, oh, jeez. They're hurting for money, right? So Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, if you want to donate. Um, uh, so I, I saw you going back and forth a little bit on Twitter with, with some people about the value of the program. You know, so I, There's a sense out there that maybe they'd be putting new games into the vault, which we were talking about earlier, how they would have to raise the price if they were going to involve new games, obviously. Um, you know, uh, do you think that's the the future? They're gonna they're gonna start offering games with that subscription, and uh, it, with then you know with each new release, as opposed to just here's our older games, um, and then you can play these ones for a few days. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna ha- obviously have to come out weeks, if not months, after the game's originally released. I I'm trying to pull it up, but I assume uh, the sports games are still. 50 bucks 60 yeah digitally they're probably still full 60 yeah they're still full (laughs) 60 digitally and we're what eight months since the consoles launched if you bought them used or or so like madden you could probably get about 15 for right now um so so even there it's worth it if you want to play some of these older games yeah i think actually i think gamestop is still selling fifa for 50 so that's pretty ridiculous i mean so that that makes this a really good deal that you yeah. cannot trade in, though. Uh, but yeah, there's no way that you're going to be getting full games, I would say, two, three months before, or two or three months after they're released. Maybe six months. Or, I mean, it could just end up being like TV shows where they don't show up on Netflix until two months before the next one starts, or the next season starts. Yeah. So. Uh, so, so you know, lay it down, TJ. Uh, if, you, if you had an Xbox One, or if this was on PS4, would you have subscribed to it? Uh, yeah, probably. Because mm-hmm. I spend enough on Ultimate Team Packs that the 10% I would make back. And I would spend enough that ten that 30 bucks I would make up for and more. So it would definitely be worth it. Yeah, I would also just, trade in all my old copies of games that I have. Actually, I can't because they're digital, so there's really no point. Yeah. yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, see, they're trapping you already. You didn't think it through. And then they're going to trap you like that. But yeah, uh, so that that's the EA Access program as far as we know it now. Um, thanks for joining me, TJ, for this quick discussion about it. Uh, we'll we'll be talking more EA Access in upcoming Press Row Hangouts and podcasts. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Feel free to send us feedback in the comments or Twitter at Pasta Padre at that sports gamer. We've already received a, a ton of terrific questions that we'll, we'll try and address in a future show. So also make sure to visit PastaPadre.com and ThatSportsGamer.com for your daily sports gaming news and breakdowns. So thanks, everyone. Take care.